Good morning, Philippines! And I am back! Good morning po sa lahat. I know it's, I think it's 9 o'clock in the Philippines right now. So good morning! And to all my students out there, hi, I don't have class with you today. But I think I will see you this coming March 1st. So please don't forget the schedule. Anyway, so to all nurses out there, for those who are planning to take the qualifying examination here in the U.S., may it be the NCLEX RN or the NCLEX PN, or if you're planning to take any qualifying examination outside the Philippines, if you're planning to take DHA, HAAD, Prometric, wala lang, good luck. <laughs> Para may masabi lang ano. Anyway, so I got bored, so I decided to go live and then talk about oxygenation kasi nga, feeling ko sometimes hindi ito na didiscuss sa, sa actual review. Feeling ko lang ha, I'm not sure, so please don't bash me on this. But anyway, if you know, if you want to know, if you want to learn something about oxygenation, feel free to stay. There is no, there is no fee for this. Pakinig lang. And if you have any questions, uh, just comment below and then uh, I'll try to answer those questions. And uh, if you have any topics or anything you want me to talk about, anything, anything that you want me to discuss, um, please let me know. So yun nga, so we'll talk about oxygenation today. Uh, just give me a few seconds. Yep, anyway, before I start, I would like to say hi to Catherine Gallego. Thanks for watching. And hello to Angeline Escobar Castro Nuevo Orpilia. Ang haba ng pangalan nito. It's quite mouthful. And hello to Ivy Mabanag. Thanks for watching. And Chris Milano. Thanks for watching. Ayan. And of course, hello to Nurse Mike and to Ma'am Joanne. Hi there. And to Sir Roms. Thank you so much for keeping this uh, Facebook track alive and kicking. So anyway, this is actually in partnership with Green Door and the U.S. Review Center. And I'm just excited, guys, because uh, tawag nito, we have partnership. We ha we're able to, the Green Door, not me, the Green Door were, was able to establish a partnership with some facilities here in the U.S. So if you're planning to work here, get your sponsorship. So try to reach out. Green Door. Anyway, we have a comment here. Hello. Hi, sir, from... Karin Gallego. Hi there, Karin. Karin, taga saan ka? Anybody who is planning to take the NCLEX anytime soon or you just received your ATT or authority to take or if not, in the process of your NCLEX application, just let me know. Hello to Leo June Innocencio. Thanks for watching. Nalilito ako kasi nung unahin kong basahin. Ano? Iba yung monitor dito sa Facebook. Meron din ako sa isang stream. Okay. Hey, Leia June. And, and to all my students, actually, hi there. And I'm just excited to, to, to meet you this coming March 1st. But you know what? I was thinking yesterday na may klase ako sa inyo. And I was waiting for Rom to send me the link sa portal natin. Pero wala. Sabi ko, bakit wala, bakit wala ako natanggap na link? <laughs> Kung hindi pa naman ako tanga. <laughs> Nung chine ko yung schedule, my God, hindi pala, ako yung schedule, hindi pala ako yung coach na schedule yesterday. Iba pala yung coach niyo. So, yun. So, ang ginawa ko wala. Nakahiga na lang ako kumain. And then, hello to, uh, hi sir, sabi ni Leo Jun Innocencio. And thanks for watching Jenny Cruz. Jenny. Sounds like the first name of my aunt. Anyway, so hello to my aunt there in Las Vegas. I'll see you this coming March 11. And by the way, for those of you living somewhere in Wyoming, I will be in Yellowstone this coming March 11 to 18. So, ang mangyayari is I will drive from Minneapolis going to 
going to Yellowstone. So, hindi ko alam kung ano yung rota papunta doon. So, hopefully, if I will see you if you're along the way, let me know. And here we have Marie Free Woodard. Ang tara na pang- pangalan nito. Hello, sir. I was your student years before from NLE. I am from Osami City, Philippines. Tara dito, ah. Hello, Marie Kumusta? Oh, yun, na-miss ko rin yung Osamis. Alam mo, pag pumupunta ako sa Osamis, usually lagari yung schedule eh. Usually, iPad yung dinadaanan ko. Yun yung iPad. Iligan, Pagadian, Osamis, at saka Dipolo. Yan. So, I always start sa Iligan, then pa- papuntang ano, Dipolo. Hello? Anong year kita naging student, Marifi? What year was that? What year was that? Sir, bakit di ma-share? Sa'yo lang talaga na hindi ma-share kasi naka-block ka. Chika lang. <laughs> I don't know bakit hindi ma-share. Actually, naka-public to. So anybody can view this one. I don't know how to how I don't know how to make this platform shareable. Hindi ko po alam, sorry. Pero na Pwede naman yata ma-share. Naka 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 public to eh. Anyway, yeah, Marie Fiend ganda ng pang-apelyado mo, Woodard. At saka nasaan ka ngayon? And by the, way, by the way, simultaneous po yung aking stream nasa Facebook ko page, nasa US Review Center, nasa private, at saka nasa YouTube. Tara, yun ang dami. Pili ko ang dami kong viewers. <laughs> oh my God. Na-hyperactive ako bigla. Ang dami kong kinain na chocolate. Yun talaga pag kumakain ng chocolate, ayan, naging biglang na-hyper. Uh, ito dami na katago. Oh. Hello Maria, Mika, Iris, Flores, Diana, Orense, Castillo, Bianca, Noserale. Hi to Helen Solomon Lizazo. Hi. Ano yan? Nakbat na. Tinag mo na lang siguro sila kasi hindi mo ma-share. <laughs> anyway, so yun nga ano, I, I I will start my 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 what do you call this? My oxygenation concept in a bit. So, may mga tanong ba kayo sa about oxygenation? Anyway, yung yung topic ko actually, we I will start with uh the the ventilation process. Okay? Yung internal respiration, external respiration and then we will talk about uh we'll talk about the different oxygen devices or interfaces that we use. Most probably, yung mga ibang interface dito na na meet din sa hospital or nakita niyo na sa hospital. Ano yung story yung mga nasal cannula, you know, famous nasal cannula. May mga ano pa tayo, face mask, we have venturi mask, we also have a uh, partial rebreather mask, and of course, the non-rebreather mask. Actually, marami pa po tayong mga, we have several oxygen interfaces, but I will only name and discuss these common commonly used oxygen interfaces. Meron ba nga tayong, apart from having a nasal cannula, meron pa tayong high flow nasal cannula. I don't know if you have seen that one. Meron pa tayong mga tipis. Okay. But I will discuss and again, I will show the pictures as well as we go along. And then, apart from that, pag na-discuss natin yon, if I have time, we will talk about mechanical ventilator. MECVENT. And uh, actually, pinag-iisipan ko nga ano, kung i-discuss ko yung MECVENT dito or I will have a separate live about mechanical ventilator wherein I will discuss the different setups of your mech vent. Okay, yung mga alarms ng mech vent, the setup, if you're familiar with assist control, pressure support, high frequency oscillation na common ginagamit sa mga bata. Okay, we will see. Now, we will see as we go along. Ayan. Okay lang ba sa inyo kung iisang video lang yon or you want to have a separate concept for that? Anyway, here, uh, Marifi said 
here in Ozamis. Here in Ozami City and planning to take my NCLEX po. Oh, year 2010. My God, ang tagal na katang sudyante. 13 years, right? You were with Sir Lasso and of course, Doc Arce. Yeah, my God, those were the days. Naalala ko dati 2010, lagari talaga yung schedule. Yan yung kasagsagan na ang daming, ang daming, tawag ito, ang daming nag-take up ng nursing. Prior to that, parang, Five years before that, 2015, yan yung kasagsagan na ang daming doktor na nagtetake ng nursing. Right? And hi to Ma Vicky. Hi there. And hello and thanks for watching to Cheryl Villahuan Tubera. Hi there. Marifi, kailan ba yung examination mo ng NCLEX? Sa kapag file ka na, may ATTT ka na ba? Tatlong T ba yun? ATTT. <laughs> ATT. Authority to take. And hello to Sunny, Sunny the Cat. Hi po. Hello rin po. <laughs> Hi there, Sunny. Thanks for watching. Okay, I think uh, all set na tayo. Okay. So we'll talk about, okay. Okay. I hope you can hear me, guys. I mean, hi, sir. Thanks to this group page. Welcome. And may nakalagay pa dito. Hi, sir. Uh, last year sana, pero sad to say, na-scam po kami. Oh my God! Na-scam! What happened? And uh, Sunny the Cat said, Thank you po sa uploads nyo. Marami ako natutunan. One of the instruments na nakapasa, nakapasa ako sa board exam last 2018. Oh, thank you so much. Yung mga upload. Uh, I think you're watching my old videos sa YouTube. Actually, you know what, Sunny Cat? Yung mga na-upload ko sa YouTube, old, old videos na yun. Mga way back, early 2000 pa. Matagal din yung mga videos. Actually, tawag nito, pinag-isipan ko lang yung dati na mag-post kaya ako ng video, nagle-lecture ako. Yun lang yun. Tapos, may mga sudyante na kaman, Sir, post ka pa, post ka na, upload ka pa ng mga videos. Doon nag-umpisa yun. Oh, tapos ngayon, nagla-live na ako kasi tawag nito because of this pandemic. So sabi ko, hindi ko na mabitawan yung, hindi ko na mabitawan yung uh, Facebook Live. Kasi nga, tawag nito, nung pisahan ko na, tapos daming na, ang daming nagme-message, Sir, discuss ka lang itong topic. Yes po, yun po, hey, galing niyo po kasi ma-explain. Oh, thank you so much, Sunny Dakat. I'm so, I'm, you know, I'm so, I'm, I'm flattered and uh, at the same time, nagpapasalamat ako sa mga, you know, somehow, hindi tayo, kahit hindi tayo magkakilala personally, hindi mo naman tayo nag-meet in person, uh, sa platform ko at sa konting tulong ko, you're able to pass examination. You know? And to be honest, hindi lang naman po med surge yung bulk na examination. Ang dami pa pong concept, but somehow, uh, nagpapasalamat din ako, no, na naking tulong din ito, somehow. And of course, paired with your prayers, dedication mo to pass the exam, at saka mga, mga iba pang mga review materials na ginagamit niyo. Okay? Anyway, so let's start. Okay. So just I just mentioned that we'll talk about oxygenation today. So feel free to drop a message if you have any questions or clarification or anything you want to ask. Please let me know. Okay? So let me share my screen and uh, I want to talk about oxygenation. Okay? Whiteboard. Share screen. Let's 
seize them. Okay, here. So we'll talk about oxygenation. Okay, so what do you what do you mean when you say oxygenation, Sir John? Uh, oxygenation refers to uh, distribution, giving of oxygen to the body cells or to body cells. So in order for you to deliver or give oxygen to the cells, there must be an adequate ventilation process, okay? So when you say ventilation, technically it talks about breathing, okay? So when you breathe in, air gets inside. When you breathe out, air gets out as well, okay? So there must be an efficient ventilation process, okay? So that, that, is, that is so essential in order for oxygenation to happen. Second, why is it important for, for cells to receive oxygen? Para sa ano ba yung oxygen, Sir John? Okay? Your oxygen is vital in a sense that kailangan siya ng cell because oxygen helps to form energy. Okay, it, it is needed to form energy and that energy is in a form of what we call ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so to make it simple, ito nangyayari. We know for the fact that your carbohydrate, okay, in layman's term, we call it sugar, your glucose, your sugar. If you bind that with oxygen, okay, if you bind it with oxygen, shortcut lang to ha, that will give you ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Okay. So, because of oxygen molecules, it will help provide energy to the cells. That's your ATP. So, if you have, if you have insufficient, insufficient oxygen, it affects ATP production. Yes, it does. Okay? So, pag sinabi ba natin ATP or adenosine triphosphate, ito lang ba talaga yung source ng energy natin? Actually, hindi. If you don't have glucose, if there's no glucose that, can, that can get inside the cell, the cells will find ways or means to have energy, source of energy. So dito papasok yung protein, dito papasok yung, yung fat as a form of energy. Kaya nga ang tawag natin doon, it's your gluconeogenesis, right? So there is formation of new source of energy, okay? Now, but generally speaking, in a, in a normal condition, there are three ATP regenerations, okay? So, ano yung tinatawag natin ATP regeneration? Regeneration. There are three ATP regenerations. First is what we call your direct phosphorylation of ADP and CP, okay? The second source of ATP is your aerobic respiration. And the third source is what they call anaerobic respiration. So these are the three different ATP regenerations used by the body. Okay, let, allow me to discuss this one by one. There is direct phosphorylation. So what is phosphorylation? Phosphorylation is a process wherein you get the phosphate of one substance from a compound and you mix that phosphate taken to another compound. Okay, so in short, kukunin mo yung phosphate sa isang mixture, sa isang compound, and then idadagdag mo dun sa kabila. Okay, na look. The first ATP source is direct phosphorylation of ADP. Okay, A. Ano ba yan? ADP. ADP with CP. ADP stands for adenosine diphosphate. So there are two phosphates. Okay, there are two phosphates. CP stands for creatine phosphate. Creatine phosphate. So what is direct phosphorylation? Direct phosphorylation means kukunin niya ang phosphate sa CP at i-add niya sa ADP. Making your phosphate now three molecules. So from adenosine diphosphate na dalawang phosphate molecules, magiging ATP na siya 
adenosine triphosphate. Make sense? But the problem here is that the energy generated or the ATP produced by the first ATP regeneration, which is direct phosphorylation, will not last that long. Okay, the energy supplied by this ATP source or ATP re regeneration will last for about five to ten seconds only. Okay, after five to ten seconds, ATP is depleted. So here comes the second source of ATP regeneration, which is the most effective, and that is your aerobic respiration. Tinawag siyang aerobic because it involves presence of gas, your oxygen. Sabi nga natin that carbohydrate plus oxygen will give you energy and that is in the form of adenosine triphosphate. Okay? So this is the most effective way source of ATP used by the body. Ibig sabihin, pag hindi ka kumakain, walang energy, technically, you become weak. Either it's problem with your oxygen, okay, ventilation problem, or oxygen supply or delivery of oxygen, then it affects ATP that will also give you weakness. Okay? And I will explain that in a bit. Okay? In, not in a layman's term, but more for nurse's side. Okay? Or the medical side or the medical aspect. Basta tandaan na lang natin, pag walang oxygen, hindi ma-form yung energy, you become weak. Kaya nga, napansin mo yung mga anemic na tao, right? Di ba anemic, sir, decrease RBC or hemoglobin count, decrease? So, paano siya, na, na, paano siya na isingit mo sa oxygen? Remember, if a patient is anemic, okay, regardless of the type of anemia, by definition, what is anemia? Anemia is a condition characterized by a decrease in the RBC count or a decrease in the hemoglobin mass. So, having said that, a decrease on the RBC count or a decrease in the hemoglobin mass will lead to decrease oxygen-carrying ability of the blood. Right, so if the blood will not will not effectively or efficiently carry oxygen, that will lead to decrease oxygen carrying ability. So decrease ang oxygen carrying ability ng blood, so decrease ang oxygen supply to the cells, resulting to what? Decrease energy production. That explains if you're anemic, there is asymptotability. Okay, if you're anemic, there is weakness. Okay. Kaya nga, you have to give O2 supplement to, to a patient who is anemic. You have to treat what causes anemia. And in severe cases, if the, if the hemoglobin is so low, usually if it's less than 7, we, give, we do blood transfusion. Okay? So anyway, so that is under your aerobic respiration. Sir, if the direct phosphorylation can give you an energy lasting for 5 to 10 seconds, what about aerobic respiration? Well, that depends on the supply and demand of your carbohydrate, supply and demand of your oxygen, okay? If the demand is so high and the heart cannot meet the demand, okay? If the pulmonary can meet the demand, if there's an imbalance now, okay, between the demand and supply ratio, and here comes the aerobic respiration kicks in. Ibig sabihin, kinulang ka, kinapos ka ng oxygen. So instead of giving you ATP, may energy pa rin, Pero may kasama siyang substance. And what is that? It involves lactic acid production. And that makes it a problem. Okay, sana yung aerobic eh, may ATP. What makes it a problem is the lactic acid. Okay? Lactic acid is a byproduct of an aerobic respiration. Okay? So that makes it a problem. That is the reason why okay, you end up having uh, what do you call this? Myalgia or muscle pain. That and okay, that's the reason why you have pain, you know, after working out, may mga muscle ache because of lactic acidosis. Lactic acid can cause injury. Okay, so these are the three ATP regenerations that you have to understand. Okay, now let's go back. So, paano ba yan, sir? Paano ba maintain yung adequate delivery of oxygen? Well, that is a broad question. Okay, so tandaan mo lang that in order for for the body to deliver oxygen efficiently, ang dami kang dapat i-consider. Okay? Yung ventilation, yung cardiac status of the patient, the vascular status of the patient, and the blood condition of the patient. Kaya nga, pag sinabi mo oxygenation concept, it's a big concept in medical surgical nursing. Because under oxygenation, you will discuss respite. 
Under oxygenation, you will talk about vascular abnormality. Under oxygenation, you will talk about blood disorders. And under oxygenation, you will talk about cardiac disturbances. So that explains why that if in the hospital, your patient has a pulmonary problem, a respiratory problem, a vascular problem, a blood problem, okay, or a cardiac problem, most likely you give O2 supplement because it affects oxygenation. Okay? Now, what oxygen device will you use? That depends on the condition of your patient. Okay? But anyway, let's begin with your ventilation. Okay? Now, we know for the fact that the primary stimuli for oxygen, okay, the primary stimuli for the patient to breathe under normal condition, normal person, is actually increased carbon dioxide. Okay? So, primary stimuli, primary stimuli, okay? to breathe, okay? Primary stimuli to breathe is actually increased carbon dioxide. This is for normal people. But for patient who is a COPD, okay, COPD, but if COPD is an old name, there's a new name for that. We call it a charcal. Cal stands for chronic airflow or chronic airway limitation, okay? Chronic airflow or chronic airway. Hold on, let me see. Baka may, nag, may mga question dito. Okay, good. So chronic airflow or chronic airway limitation. If you're a COPD, your primary stimuli to breathe is not increased carbon dioxide. Instead, a decrease in oxygen. And we call that as your hypoxic drive. Okay? That explains why nurses that if a patient is a COPD, we do not give a high O2 flow rate because the moment you give a high O2 flow rate, okay, the patient with COPD will lose the drive to breathe. It can cause respiratory depression. Okay? So anyway, ang mangyayari ganito. Okay? I'll just, I'll just draw the heart. I'll just draw the heart first. Okay? Our heart is divided into two sides. Correct? The right side of the heart and the left side of the heart. And the heart has four chambers the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. These two sides are actually connected by a closed circuit called blood vessel. Okay, a blood vessel connected on the right side, okay, is what we call superior and inferior vena cava. It's, that's the largest vein, okay? On the left side, the blood vessel connected there is actually your what? The blood vessel connected here is actually your aorta. Okay? Your aorta. And that is the largest artery. Okay? And then, please bear with my drawing, okay? Aorta should be here, but I just want to make it sure that nakukuha nyo yung flow. Okay? And then, it's an artery. A small artery is what they call arteriole. Until such time, it reaches the smallest vessel called the capillary. And then, balik na naman siya sa vein area. Okay? So, here's the scenario. A vein carries blood back to the heart. Correct? That's very basic. That is very elementary. A vein carries blood back to the heart. And that blood is a blood rich in carbon dioxide, low in oxygen. That blood enters the superior and inferior vena cava. And that blood enters the right atrium. Your right atrium will pump the blood. And that blood goes and fills your right ventricle. The right ventricle will pump the blood. It goes to your lungs. Okay, so here's the scenario. In the lungs, in the lungs, dito mong ngayari ang tinatawag nating first gas exchange. Okay? What happened there is that when you inhale, okay, alveoli inflates. Okay? So as alveoli inflates, the membrane touches the vascular compartment in the pulmonary area. That membrane of alveoli that touches 
the vascular area is the site of gas exchange. Ibig sabihin, gas exchange will happen only sa alveolar na nakatouch sa membrane ng vascular area, not the entire alveoli. Okay? Ang tawag po sa area na yan ay ACM. What is ACM? Alveolar capillary membrane. So technically, gas exchange happens in the alveolar capillary membrane, not the entire alveoli. So what will happen now is, pasok yung oxygen. Remember I said that in your blood, okay, it is a blood rich in carbon dioxide, low in oxygen. So there will be exchange of gases that will happen in the pulmonary area. So what will happen now is by virtue of diffusion, oxygen molecules will get inside the blood in exchange of free carbon dioxide. So there is what we call gas exchange. That gas exchange is what we call external respiration. So when I say external respiration, it is a gas exchange between okay, atmospheric air and blood. Atmospheric air and the blood. That atmospheric air that enters the pulmonary area. Okay? Now that is why when the blood leaves that site, that is now a blood rich in oxygen, low in carbon dioxide. And that will enter the left side of the heart especially left atrium. So the blood that enters the left side of the heart is a blood rich in oxygen, low in carbon dioxide. See the opposite? That explains why that the left side of the heart is the side of the heart that receives oxygenated blood. Right side of the heart is the side of the heart or portion of the heart that receives deoxygenated blood. So the blood now that fills the left atrium will be pumped to your left ventricle. Left ventricle will eject the blood to your aorta down to the systemic circulation. So that is why artery carries blood away from the heart. And that blood is a blood rich in oxygen, low in carbon dioxide. Here's the scenario. Now, when that blood rich in oxygen enters the capillary area, okay, remember I said that the capillary is the smallest blood vessel and because of its characteristic, it would be easy for molecules to diffuse. Pagdating sa capillary, okay, ito yung mga cells natin. Cells need oxygen, correct? Remember, oxygen plus carbohydrate becomes ATP. So dito ngayon papasok, ang gas exchange between the blood and the cell. So yung, yung, yung dala-dala ng oxygen ng blood, ilalabas na yan, kukunin ng cell. In exchange ng alin, carbon dioxide. Okay? So again, in this area, there is another gas exchange. A gas exchange here occurs between the blood and the cells or between the blood and tissues. Ang tawag natin dyan, I internal respiration. Internal respiration. So again, internal respiration is a gas exchange between the blood and the cells or blood and tissues. External respiration is a gas exchange between an atmospheric air in the pulmonary, in the alveoli, and blood. Okay? So that is why when the blood leaves the capillary area, it is now a blood High in carbon dioxide, low in oxygen. Bakit? Kinuha niyo yung carbon dioxide, kinuha ng cell ang oxygen. There's again diffusion. Okay? And that is a cycle. Okay? So can you imagine? If a patient has a pulmonary problem, will it affect oxygenation? Yes. If a patient has a cardiac issue, will that affect oxygenation? Yes. If a patient has a blood has blood issues, would that affect oxygenation? Yes. If a patient has a vascular problem, example, there's an obstruction, occlusion, 
stenosis, will that affect oxygenation? Yes. Kaya nga sabi ko, oxygenation is one of the biggest concept in medical surgical nursing. Okay? Anyway. Bago yan, hello muna. Tayo kay... Who do we have here? Queenie Baguio. Hello to Cheryl Villahuan Tobera, Romaline Agudo Subia. Thanks for watching. And Rachel Cruz, Jemiel Ludwig's Platt. Ludwig's. Do you know what's Ludwig's angina? There's a condition called Ludwig's angina. Anyway, Harley Alcos Consuelo Sha. Hello. Elnora Kaime. Hello to Mon Carolino and Chris Tell. Chris Tell. Anyway. Okay, let's go back. Okay? Now. If a patient, sabi ganat, has, has issues with the pulmonary area, what are, give me examples of issues in the pulmonary area. A patient with COVID-19, okay? Remember, one issue with your COVID-19 is that there is what we call consolidation, right? Mapupuno yung alveolar area ng mucus. At mga debris, as a result, because of mucus buildup and debris accumulation, it affects gas exchange, correct? So again, it affects oxygenation or a patient having restrictive lung disease, a patient having pulmonary, a patient having COPD, okay? Or a patient having a cardiac issue like congestive heart failure, a patient having cardiomyopathy, okay? So it, affect, it will definitely affect delivery of oxygen. Okay, so I think that's that, that, that's that's uh, self-explanatory. Madali intindihin niyan. Okay, now let's go back. What will happen if a patient has poor oxygen in the body? Therefore, pag ang patient po natin ay may hypoxemia, okay, so, or, or let's say hypoxia. When you say hypoxia, ano bang difference ng hypoxia? Okay, what is the difference between hypoxia and hypoxemia? Okay, when you say hypoxia, there is decreased oxygen where in the cells or tissue. Hypoxemia means decreased oxygen where in the blood. Okay, emia is blood. So in short, if you have hypoxemia, it can lead to hypoxia. Am I right? Okay, a decrease of ox a decreased oxygen in the blood will result to decreased oxygen in the tissues or cells. Okay, so what will happen now if you have hypoxemia? Well, that's a big concern. That's a big issue. Because pag decrease ang oxygen supply, okay, decrease ang oxygen in the blood, your brain will not function well, okay? Your liver will not function well. In short, vital structures in the body will fail to function well because they need oxygen to do their normal thing, to do their normal work, to do their function. Okay, so a decrease in the oxygen will result to tissue death. And that, you say tissue death is a general term, okay, that can lead to what? Brain death because of poor oxygen supply to the brain tissue. Okay, so ano ang gagawin natin if a patient is actually hypoxemic? If the patient has hypoxemia, okay, if the patient is hypoxic, one management there is, of course, to give O2 supplement. Okay, dito papasok ngayon yung O2 supplement. Supplementation. Okay? Your O2 supplement. But before I will discuss O2 supplementation, the different the interfaces, I want you to appreciate the overview of what we call respiratory system. Okay? Let me share my slide. Okay, here. This is the overview of your respiratory system. By the way, before I, will, before I will show that to you guys, I need to stress something. Here. So when, when we inhale, okay, when we inhale, when we inhale, alveolis inflate, correct? Alveolis inflate, rib cage rises, diaphragm goes down when we inhale. So why, why will your rib cage rise when you inhale to promote lung expansion. Why will your diaphragm goes, diaphragm goes down to promote lung expansion as well? Okay, that's during inhalation. When you exhale, okay, when you exhale, alveoli deflates, ribcage falls, the diaphragm goes up, it pushes the air out. 
okay? And the primary stimuli for those activities, okay, for normal person is increased carbon dioxide. For COPD, I said it's your hypoxic drive. And the primary and the primary regulatory center in the brain for your respiration is what we call your medulla or medulla oblongata, correct? That's, that's simple. Now, here's the overview of your respiratory system. Okay. Okay, this is the overview. You look at the lung, lung expansion here. When you inhale, rib cage rises, diaphragm goes down, alveoli inflates. When you exhale, it's the total opposite. Okay? So please don't forget that when you inhale, rib cage rises. So meron bang condition? Is there such thing as when you inhale, the rib cage falls? That ideally, when you inhale, the rib cage rises. Meron po. There is an opposite movement in the normal movement. That usually happens to patient with chest trauma, okay? And that chest trauma is commonly referred as your flail chest, okay? Flail chest, or in the hallmark of your flail chest, is what? What is the hallmark of your flail chest? Anybody? Paradoxical respiration. Now, what is paradoxical respiration? Paradoxical respiration means there's a total opposite, opposite movement in the normal movement, okay? Normally, when you inhale, ribcage rises. <gasps> when you exhale, ribcage falls. In your paradoxical respiration, it's opposite. For example, ito yung area na may fracture, may chest trauma. Ito yung area na normal. When I inhale, ribcage rises, pero yung fractured area, affected area, they move inward. <gasps> When I exhale, ribcage falls, but the fractured area outward. <sighs> there is opposite movement in the normal movement. You call that condition as your what? You call that as your paradoxical respiration. Okay? Again, paradoxical respiration is common to patient with chest traumas, usually to patient with your what? With your flail chest. And this flayed chest, flayed chest usually happens to patient with three or more, uh, three or more fractured ribs adjusted to each other. Okay, now let's go back. Now look what happens. Look what happens inside the alveolar area. Okay. Alveolar inflates, alveolar capillary membrane is the site where gas exchange. This is your alveolar capillary membrane. This is the vascular area. This is the alveolar area. So there is exchange of gases, okay? Exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen. By virtue of what? Diffusion. Remember diffusion? Movement of molecules from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. It is a form of what? It is a form of passive transport, okay? Not active. It's a form of a passive transport. Anyway, that's your gas exchange. Okay, just your alveolar area. Anyway, I hope that's clear. Do you have any questions about this? None. Kung wala, let's proceed. Now, before I will discuss, I think mas gusto ko discuss yung upper at saka lower respiratory tract muna. Okay, hold on. Okay, what tayo ng slides? Uh, it's a slide. Okay. Respiratory tract. It's a good video here. Okay. Save image. Lower. Okay. I want a bigger picture. Bigger picture. Ito na lang. Okay, hold on. Lagyan natin yung data. Your upper respiratory tract. Okay. Hey, 
And this part is your lower respiratory. Okay. Now this is your upper respiratory tract. Okay. This is the nose. The opening outside is your external nares. The opening inside is your internal nares, or you call that your nostrils. Okay, may mga buhok buhok dyan sa ilo. Ang tawag natin dun ay vibrisse. Okay. We call this as your mucus foldings here. We call this as your turbinates or the nasal concha or concave. The main function of this is actually to humidify the air coming in. Okay. Now, this part here is your pharynx. Pharynx is divided into three. You have the nasopharynx, oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx here. Okay. Now, this is what we call the epiglottis. The epiglottis is... Uh, the division of your upper and lower respiratory tract. Ibig sabihin, epiglottis pataas is your upper respiratory tract. Sa baba ng epiglottis is your lower respiratory tract. That's the boundary. The opening is what we call the glottis. Okay? The thing that covers the glottis is your epiglottis to prevent aspiration. Okay? So that's your epiglottis. So this structures here, you call that as your upper respiratory tract. And take note. What reflex, what reflex clears upper respiratory tract? Okay, we know for the fact that a reflex that clears upper is your sneezing reflex. Okay, so don't forget that sneezing is a good thing. Sneezing is a reflex that clears your upper respiratory tract. Okay, now look at your lower respiratory tract here. So this is your lower respiratory tract. This is the thyroid cartilage. This is the trachea. Take note, the trachea must be center or midline, okay? I need to tell you something about that in a bit, okay? Your trachea has a cartilage. It has a soft portion and a, large, and a hard portion. The hard portion is made up of a cartilage, and the soft portion will facilitate entry and exit of air, okay? Now, your trachea is actually ciliated. Ibig sabi may, may mga parang mga buhok-buhok, okay? Ciliated, okay? And then the distal part of your of your trachea, this part is what we call carina, but walang label yan. Anyway, the distal part before before it bifurcates into right and left primary bronchus, the distal part is your carina. Okay. Now, thing to remember here. Okay, so if this is what we called your trachea, okay, before she mag bifurcate, this part here, okay, is what we called carina or carina. Okay, don't forget that carina or carina is an anatomical landmark for the placement of your endotracheal tube. Remember when we intubate patient, the tip of the endotracheal tube, yung dulo, the tip of the endotracheal tube must be at least three inches to four inches above carina. So, dapat yung endotracheal tube mo, yung tubo niya, at least three inches above, two to three inches, other book three to four. Why is it important for the tip of the endotracheal tube to be above carina so that there's equal distribution of your air? That is why if you notice, after doctors intubate the patient, the doctors will make it sure that there is symmetrical lung expansion. They will listen for the breath sounds of the patient, they assess the patient and they will order x-ray to check placement. Okay? Anyway, I mentioned that the trachea is ciliated. Oh, ito yung cilia. Ayan, cilia. Let's say ito yung, lagay natin dito, ito yung cilia. Parang mga buho. Okay? Underneath may mga cells. Okay? You call these cells as your goblet cells. Goblet cells. Goblet cells are cells responsible in producing mucus. Okay, it will produce mucus. Now, what is the relevance of your goblet cells and then your mucus? They're actually for protection. Alam niyo ba yun? Oh, really? Yes. So analyze. When microorganism or any foreign object gets inside the lower respiratory tract, okay, paalisin niya siya ng cilia. Sabi ng cilia, alis John, alis John, alis John, alis John. 
Ayan. And the goblet cells will produce mucus to trap the microorganism or to trap that foreign object. Bakit kaya lang may mucus? Itatrap na yan to prevent that foreign object to penetrate, okay? To go to a deep, lower respiratory tract environment. Ibig sabihin, itatrap niya to prevent that microorganism to go to the deep structure of the lower respiratory, which is a form of protection. Kasi pag nasa lower na siya, sa pinakamababa na siya ng part ng kay lower respiratory tract, most often may hirapan ka magpalabas. Okay? So, with the air coming in and out, in and out, in and out, okay, it will facilitate removal or clearing of lower respiratory tract. So, we can say that if sneezing clears upper respiratory tract, ano naman ang sa lower respiratory tract? Answer, coughing. So, cough, okay, cough is a reflex that clears lower respiratory tract. Sneezing is a reflex that clears upper respiratory tract. So ngayon, what will happen if the patient has an ineffective coughing reflex? Now, sino-sino ba yung mga ineffective ang coughing reflex? Number one, those who are elderly, who are very weak, uh, those who are sedated, Okay, sino pa yung may mga weak uh, coughing reflex apart from elderly, sedated, those patients with uh, neuromuscular problems. Now, what are those neuromuscular problems that will affect motor functioning, that will affect coughing reflex, patient having uh, multiple sclerosis, patient with myasthenia gravis, patient with uh, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, patient having, what else? Uh, GBS, Galibari syndrome. Remember, those conditions will, uh, will affect motor functioning. Okay? And if you can still remember in your medical surgical nursing, a patient with neuromuscular problem affecting motor functioning will always end up having respiratory issues. Okay? Now, going back, if a patient has an ineffective coughing reflex, we can say that if you cannot clear your lower respiratory tract, instead that this mucus is being cleared, mucus now will accumulate inside, okay? And when that mucus accumulates, that will be a good breeding site for the microorganism. So that will put the patient at risk of infection. Not only that, if there is infection, okay, if there's infection, it will trigger inflammatory response. So you will have inflammation in the airway and that will eventually cause what? Airway obstruction. So hindi lang pala infection ang concern. You will also end up having airway issue. Okay? Especially for patient with an ineffective coughing reflex. So how do we how do we treat this one? We do suctioning. Okay? We do suctioning. We we can reinforce and improve respiratory muscles by teaching patient other ways or may mga therapy tayo, right? That is why dito papasok yung uh, you need to promote lung expansion, strengthen the respiratory muscles, tell the patient to use an incentive spirometry, okay? Now, I am not sure if, I am not sure if you, you do that to your patient, especially post-op patient or patient who, are, who is actually weak. You have to reinforce, you have to tell them you need to do incentive spirometry. Because incentive spirometry, part ng therapy yan that will strengthen the respiratory muscles that will improve, increase lung expansion, preventing complications. Okay? Now, what else? So, ibig sabihin, pag ang patient po natin may ineffective coughing, sabi mo, Sir John, you can also suction the patient. Yes. Okay? The problem with your suctioning is that if it is invasive suctioning, okay, it may cause trauma to the lower respiratory tract. And by the way, isa, isa pala sa mga common na lumalabas sa NCLEX is that when you suction the patient and you happen to see in the monitor that the oxygen drops or the heart rate of the patient drops, what will you do as a nurse? What will you do? You stop suctioning, you hyper-oxygenate the patient, correct? Now, why will you stop suctioning? Because the reason why the heart rate drops when you suction is due to vagal stimulation and you hyper-oxygenate. Remember, when you suction patient, you do not only remove secretions, you also remove gas from your patient, okay? So anyway, so that is what they call coughing reflex. Okay, again, coughing reflex, a reflex that clears lower respiratory tract. Okay, sneezing reflex, a reflex that clears upper respiratory tract. 
Okay, when the alveolar okay, when 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 you inhale, alveolar inflates. Okay, when you exhale, alveolar deflates. And by the way, when when the alveolar inflates and it reaches its maximum elasticity, the alveoli automatically deflates. You know that there's a reflex for that. Uh, you call that reflex as herring brewer reflex. Herring brewer reflex. Herring brewer. Uh, spelling ito po. Herring. Herring. Brewer reflex. Okay. Herring brew. That are our puyan. Herring brewer. Okay. Anyway, let's go back. So if a patient has poor oxygenation, one management I said is you do O2 supplement. Okay, so I will just discuss this uh, uh, non-invasive O2 supplementation. So you can do nasal cannula, okay, nasal cannula, or if not, we do simple, simple face masks. Number three, we also do Venturi mask. Okay, number four, we have partial rebreather mask. And number five, we have a non rebreather. Okay, so these are commonly used uh, oxygen interfaces or oxygen devices. So what I'm, what I'm going to do now is I will discuss them one by one. At ano lang yung limit nila no, liters per minute. Okay? Liters per minute. So, nurses should know this one kasi minsan sa hospital, bigyan lang tayo bigyan ng oxygen na where in fact, it's not doing good to her patient. It, it's not doing good to your patient or if not, bigyan ka nang nang bigyan, nag-aaksaya ka lang ng oxygen. Okay? So, I will give you the limit or the, what do you call this, the recommended liters, the flow rate the device, and how much FiO2 is being given to your patient, okay? I have a slide for that. Here. Hold on. Okay, may tanong. Uh-huh, walang tanong. That's good. Here. If your nasal cannula, your simple face mask, the venturi mask, partial rebreather mask, and a non-rebreather mask. Okay? Actually, sabi ko nga kanina, marami pa yan. Okay? Now, this is your nasal cannula, right? This is the most famous nasal cannula. Nasal cannula can be used for long term, okay? And uh, if you're going to use nasal cannula, you can deliver 1 to 6 liters per minute of O2. Ibig sabihin you cannot exceed six liters for nasal cannula. If you plan to give eight liters per minute of O2 via nasal cannula, incorrect yun. You have to change the device, okay? And the FiO2 delivered by nasal cannula ranges from 24 to 44%, okay? Now, ano ibig sabihin, Sir John? When you give six liters per minute, okay, six liters per minute, Let's say the FiO2 is 44% max given or received by the patient, okay? And the O2, the, the O2 satura saturation of your patient is still, let's say, 84. That's the O2 sat. Itinaas mo yung nasal cannula ng 9 liters per minute na akala mo ang FiO2 tataas. Hindi po tataas ang FiO2. Yan lang talaga ang kayang ibigay ng nasal cannula na FiO2, which is 44%. Ibig sabihin, if you exceed that more than 6 liters, that is the FiO2 capacity of nasal cannula. So if you give O2 via nasal cannula of 10 liters per minute, you are wasting oxygen because you know for the fact that if it is nasal cannula, it can only deliver 1 to 6 liters per minute. Okay? I hope that is clear. Next. When you give O2 supplement to your patient, especially if it is a high flow rate, do not forget to humidify the oxygen. Because if you failed, okay, hold on. 
Because if you fail to humidify the oxygen given to your patient, if it is 100% air, it can cause drying of the airway passages. And that will give discomfort to your patient. It can cause irritation in the nasal mucosa. It can cause injury in the nasal mucosa because if the mucous membrane is dry, it will break. Okay, A break in the mucous membrane will increase the risk of infection. It will also give discomfort. So don't forget if you give O2 supplement and a high flow, do not forget you need to humidify the O2, okay? Make it sure that the humidifier will not run dry, okay? Anyway, let's go back. So that's your nasal cannula, and this is your simple face mask. Okay, let's say, Sir John, nagbigay na ako ng, ano, ng six liters sa pasyente, mababa pa rin yung O2 supplement. Oh, so you can, you can what? You can advance or upgrade your delivery system. So instead of using nasal cannula, you use simple face mask. Okay? Simple face mask. Kung ayaw mo naman ng simple face mask, you can use a high-flow nasal cannula. What is the difference between a typical nasal cannula, sorry, and a high-flow nasal cannula? The bore of the cannula is bigger sa high-flow. Samantala yung nasal cannula lang, maliit yung kanyang tube, maliit yung kanyang bore. Samantala yung high-flow, mas malaki yung butas niya, mas malaki yung bore ng cannula. Okay? Anyway, for simple face mask, you can deliver 5 to 8 liters per minute. It can give you an FIO2 of 35 to 55%. Okay? That is your simple face mask. So, ibig sabihin, when the patient breathes in, the oxygen is trapped here in the masks, okay? And that will be inhaled by your patient. Okay? This is your Venturi mask. Among the oxygen devices or oxygen interfaces, Venturi mask is the best. Why? That is the only device that can deliver a most precise oxygen concentration. So it, you can use Venturi mask if you want to deliver 4 to 10 liters per minute of oxygen. And the FiO2 depends sa valve or adapter na gagamitin. Okay, so if you use this blue adapter or valve, it can deliver a 24% FiO2. So ibig sabihin, if your patient did not respond well here, you can advance, okay, until such time you reach this green valve, which can deliver 60% FiO2. So that depends on the need and the case of your patient. Bago, bang, bago kung makalimutan, if a patient... If a patient, ayan, if a patient receives O2, okay, O2 supplement via mask, venturi mask, simple face mask, basta naka mask, eh, and patient is, uh, what do you call this, my fear, so my enclosed spaces, okay, that will increase client's anxiety. Another thing, using oxygen via mask will also increase the risk of aspiration, okay? So if you want to decrease the risk of aspiration, if you want to decrease client's anxiety, you may use nasal cannula. Mas portable, mas convenient yung nasal cannula compared sa mask. Just want to share. I just want to share that one. Okay, let's go back. So the FiO2 in your Venturi mask depends po sa adapter na gagamitin. Okay, I hope that is clear. And this is your... Partial rebreather and a non-rebreather mask, okay? The picture on the left side is a rebreather mask. Why do we call it rebreather, okay? Remember, this is a rebreather mask with a bag, okay? It has a bag in it. Make it sure that the bag is inflated, okay? So analyze. Oxygen enters here in the masks and the patients breathe in the oxygen, when the patients breathe out, the carbon dioxide still stays in the masks. Am I right? So, ibig sabihin, in a partial rebreather, nalalanghap pa rin ng patient ang carbon dioxide na na-exhale niya because it stays inside the mask. Kaya we call it partial rebreather. Samantala, ang non-rebreather, it has a one-way valve in the mask. Ibig sabihin, Air stays, oxygen stays inside the masks and patients breathe in the oxygen. When the patients breathe out, 
mass, okay? That carbon dioxide leaves the mask via this one-way valve, okay? So it leaves the masks and then it closes and then it is spilled again with oxygen. Ibig sabihin, in a non-rebreather mask, sigurado ka na oxygen talaga ang maraming nanalanghap ng patient. Because when the patient exhales carbon dioxide, it leaves the masks via this one-way valve. Samantala, ang rebreather mask, wala siyang one-way valve, nakukulong pa rin dito, natatrap pa rin ang carbon dioxide. Okay? So this is a non-rebreather mask this is a rebreather mask. The only difference is a non-rebreather has a one-way valve in the mask. Okay? So that is why if you notice, kung mas maraming oxygen ang naibibigyan ng non-rebreather mask, look at the parameter. The FiO2 delivered by non-rebreather is higher than a partial rebreather. A partial rebreather can deliver FiO2 ranging from 60 to 90% only. Samantala, ang non-rebreather can deliver 70 to 100% FiO2. Okay? And they can both deliver or administer oxygen 6 to 12, 6 15 liters per minute respectively. Okay? And may nagpapabati. Ronald Serrano Dizon. Hi, sir. Hello there. Oh, yun. So I hope this is clear. Okay? Now, question. Sir, do we need doctor's order? Do we need doctor's order to start oxygen or to deliver oxygen? I want to know your reaction. Do we need doctor's order to give O2 supplement? Do we need doctor's order when giving O2 supplement? Harley Alco said no. Ronald Serrano Dizon said no. Somebody said yes. Anybody? Do we need doctor's order? Okay. Honestly speaking, you need doctor's order when you give O2 supplement because oxygen is treated as medicine. Can you follow? So that requires okay, doctor's order. But we know for the fact that the safest oxygen flow rate is one to two liters per minute. Okay? One to two liters per minute. So that is why sa hospital, pag yung nakita mo yung pasyente mo in distress, okay, at bumababa yung oxygen, you may start giving oxygen at one to two liters per minute. Okay? And you tell the doctor. Okay? Tell the doctor. And the doctor will do some, uh, will evaluate the patient and will do some correct, uh, intervention or orders for the patient's case. Okay? So, technically, it requires doctor's order. Okay? Now, uh, what else? Yeah, I am planning to discuss the different mechanical ventilator setup, pero gusto ko sa separate na lang siya, pure mech vent lang. Okay? Now, I think I will just discuss CPAP and BiPAP. Okay, what is CPAP surgeon and what is BiPAP? Your CPAP stands for continuous positive airway pressure. Your BiPAP means bi-level, okay, positive airway pressure. So technically, it delivers air to your patient. This is usually used to patient with obstructive sleep apnea, okay? So pag yung CPAP, same pressure lang during inhalation, exhalation. Same pressure is being used for con continuously, okay? Sa BiPAP, different pressure used during inhalation, different pressure used during exhalation. So between CPAP and BiPAP, mas gusto ng pasyente yung BiPAP, mas natotolerate nila yung, yung BiPAP kasi they feel like they're not drowning compared using CPAP. They feel like drowning. Can you imagine, okay, a machine is pushing air into your lungs continuously, continuously. 
So kahit na mag-exhale ka, nagbubuga ka ng hangin, may pumapasok na hangin sa loob. So you feel na so, para kang na, na, nalulunod. Okay? So ma- ayaw nila yung sight and yung sipap. Mas gusto nila yung BiPAP. Mas natutolerate nila. Kasi nga, when you exhale, yes, may pressure pa rin na nagde-deliver ng air when you exhale, but lesser pressure compared when you inhale. Iyon yung pinangkaiba nila. Mas mataas na pressure during inhalation, mas mababang pressure during exhalation. So different ang pressure used in your BiPAP. Two pressures. Okay, two pressures. Different pressure during inhalation and pressure during exhalation. Samantala ang CPAP, same pressure all throughout continuously. Okay? Anyway, I will discuss more about MECVEN setup siguro soon. Okay? And I think I'll just discuss, uh, what do you call this? Uh, alarms in your MECVEN. Para hindi ko na siya i-discuss next time. So what's, let's talk about let's talk about uh, alarms in your mech vent. There are three common alarms in the mech vent. Okay. There are three common alarms in your mech vent. Okay. Okay. So what are common mech vent alarms? Mech vent alarms. There are three common alarms. First is what we call the high pressure alarm. Okay. Second is your low pressure alarm. And third is what we call apnea alarm. Okay. Sir, anong pinagkaiba nila? High pressure alarm is activated if there is resistance or there is obstruction. Okay? Low pressure alarm is activated usually if there is leakage or if there is loose connections. Okay? Apnea alarm is common to activate if you try to wean the patient or act then detachment of mech vent. Okay, I'll explain that. So this is our patient. Okay, our patient. Ayan. Ayan. Ito yung mech vent. Ayan. Naka, naka-intubate yung pasyente. Ayan. May corrugated tube. Ayan. Okay. So a mechanical ventilator is a machine that delivers a positive pressure. Okay, a positive pressure. Meron tayong negative pressure before but it, it's no longer used uh long long long, long time ago. I uh I I'm not sure if you're familiar with iron lung. Iron lung. Parang malaki siyang machine na ipapasok yung pasyente sa loob. Common na ginamit yung sagsagan na may polio na uh, pandemic. Okay, anyway, so right now, ang mga machines natin na make vent, positive pressure yun. Ibig sabihin ng positive pressure, it pushes air. It delivers air to your patient. Okay? So technically, when you say mechanical ventilator, it is a machine that delivers air, that delivers oxygen, that delivers air to your patient. Ipupush na yung air papasok sa baga. That's the main mechanism of make vent. Okay, it delivers air. If your patient is awake at kinakagat niya, ginangat-ngat niya, kinakagat niya yung tube. So ikaw ba naman, pag yung tube, kinagat mo, maipit. So what will happen? Pag naipit ang tube kasi kinagat ng pasyente, may resistance. The mechanical ventilator will push the air. The problem is that the, the, the air cannot pass through because the patient beat the tube. So once beaten ang tube, kinagat niya, hindi makagaan yung, yung hangin, the mechanical ventilator now will use a high pressure, will exert a high pressure to push the air to get inside the lungs. So that will activate high pressure alarm. Kaya nga to prevent that, what do we do? A patient hook in a mech vent, we sedate the patient to prevent resistance. Okay? Or another example, yung baga ng pasyente ay napuno ng plema. Oh, ngayon, if mucus now plugs the airway of your patient, 
those mucus plugs will act as an okay, as what we call obstruction. So as the mech vent pushes the air to get inside the lungs of the patient, the air cannot get inside because it, the, the airway is filled with mucus plug. Am I right? So again, that will signal the mech vent to use a high pressure to push the air to get inside. It activates again the high pressure alarm. Okay? Or, have you seen the corrugated tube? Nakita yung corrugated tube sa mech vent. Uh, sometimes it comes in a semi-transparent blue or semi-transparent white color. Uh, what did you notice inside the corrugated tube? It, it, it has moist in it. Am I right? May moist. And take note, pag may moist yan, eventually it turns into water. So what will happen now if the corrugated tube is filled with water? Pag napuno ng tubig ang tubo, as the machine pushes the air to get inside the lungs of the patient, the air cannot get inside because the tube is filled with air. So again, there is resistance, there is obstruction. It signals the machine to use a high pressure. Therefore, a high pressure alarm is activated. Ngayon, if this thing will come out in your NCLEX exam, what will you do if high pressure alarm is activated? You can what? You can suction the patient. Am I right? You can clear the tube. Okay? And don't forget to sedate the patient. Do not turn off the alarm. You have to do something about it. So, tandaan mo lang, high pressure alarm is activated if there is resistance, there is obstruction. Okay? What about low pressure alarm? Let's say that there is loose connection. Hindi mo na connect na maayos yung tube. Or let's say may butas yung tube. Oh, ngayon, kung may butas yung tube and the mech vent pushes the air to get inside the lungs of the patient, since there's loose connection, there is leakage, the mech vent now will use a low pressure because wala siyang kahirap-hirap to deliver air kasi may butas. Okay? Wala siyang kahirap-hirap to deliver air to push air because there is loose connection. So it will use a low pressure to push the air. Low pressure alarm is activated. So ang tanong, if low pressure alarm is activated sa mech vent, will you suction the patient? No. Will you clear the tube? No. Will you sedate the patient? No. What will you do? You check the connections. Okay? Next, apnea alarm. What is apnea? Apnea is a medical term that describes absence of breathing, absence of respiration. Common yan if you try to wean the patient. You know, weaning the patient, you try to evaluate whether you can whether the patient can breathe on his own. So if you try to detach the patient from the mech vent, okay, can you imagine this? Okay, can you imagine this? If you try to detach the patient from the mech vent, nobody now is breathing to the machine. And that can be seen by the machine as apnea, absence of perspiration. So the apnea alarm is activated. So, But if you try to hook the patient back to the machine, the apnea alarm is corrected. Okay? So common yun siya if accidentally na-detach yung pasyente sa machine or if you try to win the patient basta walang nakakonect na, na pasyente, then an apnea alarm is what? Is activated. So what will you do? Will you suction? No. Will you sedate? No. Will you check the connection? Yes. So what would you do here is you check the connections. Okay. Check connections. So you know what to do if these alarms are present to your patient. Okay. Now, what if Sir John, ginawa ko na ang lahat. Tara, ginawa ko na ang lahat. Ano, iniwan ka pa rin. Uh, ganun talaga yung buhay. Okay. What if Sir John, ginawa ko na ang lahat. I suction the patient. Okay, I dump the water out. I clear the tube. Patient is sedated. Connections are good, but the alarm is still on. What will you do if you cannot figure out what's causing the alarm? Okay, tandaan to ah. If you cannot figure out what's causing the alarm, your nursing action is you do manual ventilation. What is manual ventilation? Ambu bagging. Okay. Ambu bagging. So ambu bagging or manual ventilation is the nursing action if you cannot figure out what's causing the alarm. Do not ignore. 
Okay? Ang ingay ng alarm, sir, off ko siya, isa-silent ko siya. No. Okay? So again, don't forget that. If you cannot figure out what's causing the alarm, your action is you do ambu bagging or we call that as your manual ventilation. Okay? I hope that is clear. At I hope uh, may natutunan kayo. And uh, I think uh, that's all for tonight. If you have any questions, let me know. Welcome, Ronald Dizon. Yeah, I will see you, Sir Review. I will see you this coming March 1st. Don't forget that our topic on March 1st will be endocrine disturbances. Sir, kailan po ulit review sa batch 12? May review kayo, di ba? Kailan ba yun? Hold on, let me check. Alam ko may schedule kayo eh. Give me a few minutes. Meron kayong schedule. Anong ano ba? March? Ano ba ngayon? February? Ano ba ngayon? Today is February 26. Okay. Kung February 26 ngayon, wait lang ha, kung February 26 ngayon, wala kayong pasok. Ang pasok nyo, kung nasa Pilipinas ka, this is for Philippine students. February 27, 28, 9 p.m. hanggang alas dos ng umaga. Okay, so you will have your class February 27, alas 9 ng gabi hanggang alas 2 ng umaga. Pero pag nasa 26 ngayon, pero pag nasa, nandito, nandito ka sa US, yung class will be February 27, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. February 27. Yeah, so bukas pa yung class nyo. Ako, klase ko sa inyo, klase ko sa inyo will be on March March 2 and 3 in the Philippines and March 1 and 2 here in the US. So please be guided off our different time zones. Okay, do you have any questions, guys? Thanks, sir. Saan po mag for the review? Uh, may makikita kang ano? May makikita, makikita kang banner na tumatakbo sa baba ng screen? You try to message that, any of those numbers. Or if not, you try to search that website, www.usreviewcenter.com. Okay, so thank you so much, guys. And uh, if you if you stayed this long, thank you so much. I hope you learned something. God bless everybody, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.